right, guys, look at Kyo here, and look at what we have for you, lucky cats. It's Doki Doki Literature Club. Um. Well, I'm gonna go with my default name that I use for literally everything. Maya. Hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never seen yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. <sighs> I overslept again! But I caught you this time! Maybe because, maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh? You always say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Maya. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean to me, even if you want to. To be mean, even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. Eh? Uh -huh. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Maya, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already! I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true! You told me you would join a club this year! Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly fine, perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh! I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know. And I know you're happy now, but I just die at the thought of you becoming a neat in, the, in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. All right, all right. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Well, at least promise me you'll try a little. Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack my up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was facing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed! You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought 
you know, know what? Well, you could come to my club, Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to your club. Eh? Meanie? Sayori is vice president of the literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please? Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And that's who gave me cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of a nearhead or if she's so cunning as to have planned all of this out. I let a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! And thus today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third year classes and activities. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Eh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, Maya, what a nice surprise. I'm a boy named Maya. Yes, nailed it. Welcome to the club. All the words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmph. The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You could just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yori, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Yori, who appears uh, comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Maya. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Maya. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. S sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks to arrange to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrap tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Oh... Natsuki lifts the file off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the cat ears. So cute! 
had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, ya yeah, no. So sorry and take one. Sorry grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori ta talks with her mouthful as and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaky glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? You're a tsundere, aren't you? Made them for you or anything. Eh? I thought you technically did, Sayori said. Well, maybe. But not for you, you know. You... Not for, you know, you, dummy. All right, all right. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri t returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? That's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So what uh, made you join the literature club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the literature club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your club, your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you the leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, yeah, no. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica is, really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all of the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Maya, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. 
not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke out without... I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri chases the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seemed so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, I read a horror book once. Des des I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the min minimal level. At this rate, you might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh. I hate horror. Oh? Uh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually write up, like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind the last club meeting. It looked like you were writing on a poem called... Don't say it out loud. And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. <laughs> Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no! Natsuki averts her eyes. Y you wouldn't like them. Ah, uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. <laughs> the truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have a lot of writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aww, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. The next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um. Hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will all help us get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Maya? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on. There's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with, with, with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my any decision. 
I still have other clubs to look at, and, um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare at me... Stare back at me with dejected eyes. But... but I'm sorry. I thought... Hmph. <laughs> my, uh... You all. I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That's how they get you. That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wipes her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If he really just came for the cupcakes, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official! Welcome to the Literature Club! Ah, uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone! I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember today's assignment! Write a poem and to bring to the next meeting so we can all share! Monica looks over at me once more. Maya, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class of Star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, Maya, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right, Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The hallway, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I be will I really be spending every Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. All right, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Time to write a poem. Pick words you're, you think your favorite club member would like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. I'm going to say first, because I feel like I'm going to do terribly. Okay. Got it. I'm going for Yuri, by the way. There we go. Good. Mm. Unending. Unrequited. No! And that's why I saved. Well, I guess after every one I could save. Uh, determination. Got it. Yes, because I want to make progress. Um, disoriented? Got it. I know this is cheating, but technically cheating, but I don't care. Incongruent. Okay, um. Passion? Damn it. Um. Graveyard. Vibrant. 
Herr Vincent. I'm sure that's gonna get obnoxious. But I wanna nail this 100%. And you can't stop me. It's completely over, so I have to do it in one. Okay, um. Secretive. Uncontrollable. Disoriented. Philosophy. Uncanny. Perfect. Intellectual. Viper... No, ambient. Extra or... Oh, shoot. Incongruent. Um, insight. After image. Incapable. Graveyard. Fulgent. Tragedy? Damn it. Vivacious. Judgment. Unrequited. Damn it. I forgot that was hers. Misfortune. Damn it! Okay. Contamination. Philosophy, ambient, determination, um, anxiety, good, unrestrained, after image, fulgent, um, excitement. Damn it. Well, that's just one instead of the three I just did. Intellectual. Universe. Tenacious. Vivacious. Vitality. Graveyard. Judgment. Fester. Vibrant. Fantasy. Oh, fantasy. Oh, that's okay. Only missing two out of 20 ain't bad. Eight, 18 out of 20 is not that bad. Again, Maya. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Huh? Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but I'll, I at least keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Maya. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan just to, come, to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Do 
don't worry, guys. Maya always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> You two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Maya can become good friends too. Uh, um. S Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori? Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy! It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Sayori made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh? I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal. I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it can keep your it should keep your attention even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is How's this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you! I'll definitely read this. I enthousi enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in... I expected Monica to kick off s some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't, didn't seem, doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. By the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, uh, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper into the book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this song. That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Uh, well, I stopped by, stopped at the bookstore yesterday. Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well, hmm... Yuri closes the book and scans her eye, 
over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships. And her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? You already made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that the dark turn came out of nowhere. Uh -huh. Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Maya? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories... They change. They challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in. They suddenly, then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact... In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get to th get the book. I quickly retrieved the book I had put into my bag. Alright. It's fun if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah. Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in the company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do? I don't really mean to Sorry I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and then hold my book m more between the two of them Ah, uh, I suppose so Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I use my right hand to hold open the book. Uh, ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But 
in holding it like this. We're held even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I got us over at Yuri's face once again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It pro it's probably the least I could do, since you've been so patient with me. E yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it in by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently lets go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses a lot of the things that she says and does. Like, she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. Uh, I see. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Maya, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Oh, wait! I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really don't didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess I meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, uh, uh, what are you saying all of a sudden? I. Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of her th my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I... I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then let it slip back into my bag. By the way, do you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah. <coughs> My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something this so embarrassing. I kind of really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. Ooh. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. That's okay, and Yuri reluctantly complies as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Let's share with Monica. I want to share with Yuri last. I should start with Monica. Yesterday, she seemed eager to read my poem, and I want her to know I'm putting an effort. Hi, Maya! Having a good time so far? Ah, uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the clubs, like activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Uh-huh. Don't 
way, am I? We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I have Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Maya. I was going... I was going, whoa, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's, e it's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That's why I, it always counts when I put it... That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imaginary Im imagery and symbolism. <clears throat> I like Sayori who likes using simple words and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel. Or letting them deeply analyze uh, all of the nuances. It could take years of practice, which I'm sure Yuri has at this point. I never really ask, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry about it so much about it. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure... Uh, I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little biased toward their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't you f force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh huh. Uh huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a fl film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of me, the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was, it was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hall of infinite choices. I realized now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. <clears throat> and I'm going to have to stop there for the day. Because I have some things to do. But let me know if you would like to see more. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode. Stay lucky.